In this video, we're going to be describing various terms we often hear when we're talking about oxygen consumption or VO2, so VO2 max versus VO2 peak, as well as a relative VO2 max or absolute VO2 max. Starting with absolute VO2 max, the units are going to be liters of oxygen per minute of activity that you've done. And so um, it's called absolute because it's not made relative. So it's kind of the opposite of relative, really. And so um, this is going to be, the, the when you measure VO2 in this way, it's going to increase with the size of the body of the person. And so a large person's always going to have a greater absolute VO2 max than a smaller person, regardless of their fitness level. And when you measure VO2 max, what you're really trying to measure typically is their fitness level. So you can't use the absolute values in order to compare people because it's not going to be fair. Again, the big person's always going to have a higher absolute VO2 max than the small person. And so what do we do? We make it relative to their body mass. So we make it relative to their total body mass. So the units for relative VO2 are milliliters of oxygen per kilogram of body mass per minute of activity. And so now this is something that we can compare between people because it's been made relative to the size of their body. So some normative values here, and there, you should look up a norm table if you wanna learn more. There's lots of norm tables out there that show percentile ranks and give categorical ranks like good, average, things like that. But pretty average normal um, for untrained young men would be 44 to 50 mLs per kg per minute, where for women, would be 38 to 42 mLs per kg per minute. And so notice that women are a little bit lower. The primary reason for this is the fact that women have greater body fat percentage and body fat is um, essentially sort of dead weight. It's not highly metabolically active. And so when you're talking about your VO2 max and you're trying to make it relative to total body mass, the more fat you make it relative to, the more non-metabolically active tissue you're making it relative to. So it's gonna make the person look like they have a lower VO2 max than if they were to maybe make it relative to just lean muscle mass, which some people sometimes do, but it's typically more in research settings. It's not typically done in fitness settings. So talking about VO2 max, let's talk about the difference between VO2 max and VO2 peak. They're very similar concepts, but they're not the same. All right, so a VO2 peak is just the highest value attained during a graded exercise test. So in other words, we have a test like this where we have an increasing work rate over time. So typically every few minutes, it gets harder and harder and harder. And we have an increase in oxygen consumption or VO2 as we increase that intensity. So whatever the highest value seen during that test, so whenever they stopped, that is their VO2 peak. And there's no question about it, okay? Problem is, was it their best effort? Could they have done better? You know, did they sleep well last night? Were they feeling a little sick today? Anything that is going to make it not their best effort is going to make it not a VO2 max, and it's going to make it a VO2 peak. So basically, then I just define what a VO2 max is. It is the highest value attained during a true maximal effort. So their best they could do at their current fitness level. So every test has a VO2 peak. Not every test has a, it reaches VO2 max though. So when you have a VO2 max, the VO2 max and the VO2 peak are the same thing. Um, so we need to have criterion for when we determine this is truly a VO2 max and not just a VO2 peak. And so there's various criterion out there, but what I have listed down here is a fairly common set of criterion. And usually what you would say is you have to meet all or maybe you know four of the six or something like that of the criterion in order to say, yes, this was a VO2 max. And it's going to vary based on the research study you look at and based on the you know the source and in uh, in your situation what you can measure on the person on how many of the criterion you measure as well as how many of the criterion they have to hit in order to say it is a VO2 max. Um, so let's go through these common criteria real quick. So a leveling off of VO2 despite an increasing work rate. So so there's a little leveling that took place right at the end of the exercise test. That is what I mean by leveling. So an increase of less than 1.5 liters per minute or less than 2.1 mLs per kg per minute despite an increase in exercise uh, intensity. So going up a stage in exercise intensity on a test like a Bruce protocol or something like that. Another criterion is a blood lactate level greater than eight millimoles per liter of blood. Another one would be a respiratory exchange ratio or an RER equal to or greater than 1.1. 
Um, another one being a peak heart rate that is within 10 beats of the age predicted maximum heart rate of what you would expect. And then a failure of heart rate to increase with an increase, a further increase in workload. So similar to this sort of plateau, at the very end, your heart rate also tends to plateau as well. And then the last one listed here is an RPE, so a rating of perceived exertion of a 17 on the 6 to 20 Borg, Borg scale or greater than 7 on the 0 to 10 scale for RPE. So all of these are going to make it, if you achieve these, it's going to make it more likely that it was a true VO2 max, the best effort you could have done, you know, highly motivated effort, and you, you know, weren't sick or anything like that as well. I'll put links in the description below on how to measure blood lactate as well as how to measure um, heart rate and um, how to do age predicted maximum heart rates and a, a link on a video I've done on what is RPE and sort of how to use RPE just in case these any of these are new concepts for you. Let's talk a little more about VO2 peak and how it relates to the amount of muscle mass involved in the exercise. So Basically, the greater the muscle mass that is involved in the exercise, the greater the VO2 peak is going to be. And this is also one of the reasons why you can't typically have a VO2 max when using smaller amounts of muscle mass during the exercise. So something like arm ergometry, most people can't do a VO2 max on that. Most people also can't do a VO2 max on an exercise bike or leg ergometry bike. Um, so typically a treadmill or something where it's more of a full body exercise is what we need in order to get a true VO2 max. Um, but to just compare these three modalities of exercise, the VO2 peaks tend to be about 5 to 11% greater on a treadmill than on a leg ergometer. The leg ergometer tends to be about 30% greater than on the arm ergometer, and the arm ergometer tends to have the lowest of at least these these methods of exercise here is in terms of the peak VO2 that can be reached. And the reason for this is because larger, large amount of muscle mass here, more of a moderate amount of muscle mass here, and a fairly small amount of muscle mass involved in the arm ergometer. Again, the larger the amount of muscle mass, the greater the VO2 peak is going to be. The reason why the larger muscle mass results in greater VO2 peak is just more muscle that's consuming oxygen, and there's high metabolism and more more cells of the body, allowing for more oxygen in total to be used. Whenever possible, it's great to be able to do a true measured VO2 max. Um, however, uh, measuring VO2 max is you know, complicated. It requires a graded exercise test all the way to max, which not everybody is able or willing or comfortable doing. Expensive equipment, highly trained personnel in order to run that equipment. Um, uh, and so this just isn't always something that's possible. What do you do though if you can't do a measured VO2 max? You do an estimated VO2 max. So estimating a VO2 max is easier, it's cheaper, and it's usually done with submaximal tests. Not always, but usually it is. And so it's often safer for somebody who shouldn't be going all the way to maximal exercise for health or safety reasons of some sort. Um, so usually, um, people are going to do an estimated VO2 max, not a true measured. So estimated VO2 maxes are actually much more common than measured VO2 maxes. Um, keep in mind though, measurements are better. Estimates are going to have extra error because it's it's an estimate. There's a lot of different variables of how things could go wrong with an estimate. So they're not going to be quite as good as a measurement. So when you're doing a VO2 max, you're not always just doing it just to get what the maximum oxygen consumption is. You are oftentimes doing it in order to learn a little about the RER because the RER or the respiratory exchange ratio can tell you how much of each fuel you're using. So how much carbohydrates, how much fats you're using. So the next video in this series is going to be talking about the RER, the respiratory exchange ratio. And so I'll put a link in the description below this video for that as well.